Brian, uh, three 0 win for Manchester United against Leicester City in the Premier League, and uh, maybe a result that some people were expecting. But Leicester on a good run of form, three wins going into that game, uh, one in the FA Cup, of course. What do you think went wrong for them this afternoon? I think they were too open defensively, Steve, and I mean they were brave in the way they lined up with um, in a four-two kind of a three-one formation. But at times it was almost four-two-four. And uh, while well, they created plenty of opportunities in the first half, once Manchester United scored the second goal, they, you know, I, I, I was concerned for them. Uh, they probably got off lightly at 3 0, to be honest. But there were key moments in the game. Um, the opportunities they had in the first half, a couple of saves that De Gea made, the failure of the referee or any of the officials to see the foul by Sabitzer on Feist, the centre half, just before half time, which should have been really a red card and would have left Manchester United with 10 players, may, would have made a different game of it. Um, but, you know, overall, Manchester United a little bit too much quality for them. Once again, Rashford was, was superb. Vegors worked very hard. Bruno Fernandes put in a couple of key passes on goals. Played a nice one too with Sancho when he came on. Fred was busy around the middle of the, middle of the pitch. Zabitzer had, had a, a decent game in front of the back four. Back four took time to settle, I thought. But uh, from a Leicester point of view, I, I felt they were just too open and there was a lack of understanding of the, the defensive line they were trying to hold at times. And too frequently Manchester United got in behind that line and exposed the disorganisation of the offside attempts that um, that Leicester were making and trying to catch Manchester United players off. off. So you look at, at the goals, the first one, Rashford was was clearly onside where Suter stepped up too late. But Bruno's true pass, he finished very, very well. You look at the second goal, we both felt he was offside. But again, it was a situation of players stepping up and somebody keeping them on. If the line was right, I mean, I have my doubts about the VAR line. Uh, and the third goal was just a 1-2, but there was lots of other occasions when they, they, they just about escaped with, with last-ditch tackles. So uh, um, they have a bit to do, Leicester, on that. They're conceding a lot of goals, but they have quality in attack as well. Yeah, because in the first half, they certainly created the better chances out of the two sides. And they attacked really well and they showed a real threat against what is or was a, a fairly reshuffled deck at the back for United. Three changes to their back four from the game against Barcelona. But is that what you would be looking at as Brendan Rodgers, the manager of Leicester City, and thinking, yeah, I can keep this team in the Premier League this season because they are four points clear of the danger zone. But West Ham, of course, could make change to that, uh, that particular statistic by the end of the day. Yeah, well, you'd you'd feel that Leicester are too good to go down, but you've often heard that before about teams. They finished eighth last year, a couple of fifth places in the year, a couple of seasons before that. There's been a bit of a turnaround in players. Took them a long time to freshen up. Very little happened in the in the summer as regards uh, the manager said he he felt the team needed revival and renewal, and uh, they were slow to do that. Apart from the signing of of Vice. Um, but the new players that have come in, um, including the, the, the full-back Christensen, the young left-back from Denmark, Suter, who's come in, the Australian centre-half from Stoke, uh, and Tete on the right side of the attack, have given them a freshness that they showed in the last couple of games with the two four-goal uh, wins, 4-1 v Spurs, 4-2 v Villa. Um, they, and it looked like they were they were heading the right direction, but they were well beaten today. But look, at, there's no shame in losing to United. They've only lost one home game this season. Brighton beat them in the first home game of the season, only one draw other than that as well. So they've been very, very good at home, Manchester United. And uh, But they've a bit to do, Leicester, to to get the win. Like the thing with Leicester, away from home, it's four wins and eight defeats now. It's no draws. But you need to be able to snatch the odd draw away from home against good opposition and stick on a few wins. But uh, look, I think they've got enough quality in the team and they'll be OK. Before we move on to United, one question on Leicester is um, regarding two of their players because you know Tielemans has been linked to Arsenal. A lot of supporters at Leicester City feel that he's not putting the effort in now, that he doesn't look like a player that wants to be there. They've also, they're in contract talks with James Madison, 
and they want to keep him at the club, although there are people suggesting that they get him on a contract and then use him as an asset in the same way they did with Harry Maguire, Wesley Fofana, and make a lot of money to fund a rebuild that Brendan Rodgers wants to have at Leicester City. So what, what would you do as a manager with both of those players well, in that situation? As a manager, you always want to pick, keep your best players. You don't, you don't like the idea of a club selling your best players and being told... We, we'll give you the money to help the rebuild. Normally what, what happens there, if they sell a player for substantial money, you'd be lucky to get half it to reinvest in other players. But it's also, there's also an element of, of, um, of you don't know what you're going to get when you sign players. I mean, if you look at me, the biggest signings that were made this season, there's not been a huge number of them that have been out and out success. And there's been an awful lot of money invested at, at the rate of between 30, 50 and 100 million. So it can be, I wouldn't say a lottery, but it's not always it's not always easy to get the judgment right when it comes to signing players. Whereas when you have players in the squad that have been doing the consistently, player like Tillmans, who's been outstanding for Leicester in recent seasons, yes, he hasn't been so good this year. A lot of the players going to the World Cup didn't play well before they went and haven't played well since they came back. Madison is another one I mean, I thought he was poor today, but he's been very, very good for Leicester. You don't want to be losing those type of players because there's no guarantee that the players that you you recruit are going to be better than them. Leicester, in general, the recruitment has been very good and they've they've been clever in sales and clever in recruitment. But, you know, losing two of your best players, the team has changed a lot since the league winning team in 2016. 2016. There's very few of them still around. Vardy, Johnny Evans, they were injured, not playing. Vardy's not in the team. But there's no, no the rest of them in the team. They're all gone now in the space of six years into the seventh year. So it's a tough one, but it's hard to hold on to those players when they, if they, particularly they're in the bottom six or eight this year and they're, they're not likely, they're not going, they're very unlikely to get European football. Those players, Madison almost made the English team for the World Cup. Um, Tillman's used to playing international football at top level. They want to be playing at um, a higher level than what Leicester are at the moment when it comes to European football. So United win very convincingly, but uh, Marcus Rashford, we have to talk about him because he's in a brilliant run of form at the moment. There was talk, I remember this time last year, Brian, there was even United supporters suggesting that it might be better for Rashford to leave the club. What has turned around for him? Yeah, there was a lot, of, a lot of very silly talk about Marcus Rashford. Uh, 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 not just him, though, but an awful lot of players because of the performance of last year and the kind of ramshackle way they were playing under Ranyak and the whole thing about Ranyak running the team uh, on a temporary basis. And then he was also supposed to be identifying the manager and acting as director of football. It was a mess. But um, Rashford seemed to suffer under the whole situation. He also, you know, he was doing fabulous work um, away from the game in terms of the, the social issues that he was helping out on over the last couple of seasons in, um, in helping to provide, you know, food and nutrition for school kids, poor kids around the, the whole Manchester area and was, was, was awarded for, for that by getting some uh, award from the, from the, 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 the Queen. But, you know, maybe that work and his efforts on that side of it and the commercial work that he's kind of obliged to do by the, by the club took his focus off the game to a degree. But he seen whatever was, was going wrong for him, whatever other difficulties he was having away from the pitch, he seems to have got his focus back totally under Den Hag. And he seems to be in great condition. I'm no doubt that he, he, he worked particularly hard over the off-season this year to get himself back right. And uh, the manager has had a major impact on improving those players who are out of form, like Rashford. We see Sancho coming back into a bit of form now. Wan Bissaka is another one. Luke Shaw, um, you know, Fred. All these players look better than they did last year, substantially better. Varane is another one. Malassi has improved greatly since the start of the season. I was at the game to have eaten 6 3 by um, Manchester City, and it could have been 10 1. Malassia looked looked 
you know, off at that day, he didn't look good enough. Dallo, another one, he's improved dramatically. But um, that right. just goes to show you, Brian, doesn't it? That because a lot of people look down their noses, and not every, but there seems to be in England, there seems to be a tendency to look down your nose at a manager managing in the likes of the Eredivisie, but. If you know your football, you know Eric Ten Hag is a wonderful coach. We saw what he did in the Champions League with that Ajax team. And it just goes to show you what a good coach can do because so many underperforming players at Manchester United, people thought, we've got to get rid of all these players. But yeah. he comes in and he makes them look good again, like Jurgen Klopp did at Liverpool yeah. with so many players. Yeah, well, he's obviously a, a very, very talented manager. I mean, Ajax have a system for developing players they did something that you didn't really identify with when they brought the likes of uh, Tadic and Daly Blind back to the club Daly Blind in particular former Ajax player been at, you know, he came back to them and Tadic came in from Southampton had an extraordinary impact on the team but the rest of the team was a very young team and they had that extraordinary success they continued winning leagues struggling a little bit at the moment. But under Ten Hag, they were winning the league and got to the semi-final. Very unlucky not to get the final Champions League. But with players like De Jong, who was sold on, uh, the lead, the centre-back, obviously, and lots of other players. But um, they, Ten Hag has shown that he is a, a manager of substance in the work he did there. But we've seen since when he since he's come into Manchester United, his, his manner and his style, he looks like a... Looks like a tough kooky. He looks like a fella that takes no messing. He doesn't seem to say an awful lot, but he's very clear on what he says. You can see by his body body language, he's not going to take any messing or any d- disruption of the team focus of players doing their own thing. They play for the team. They play where they're told. They do the job they're told, or else they don't play in the next match. And we've seen. Him Beginning a bit of an overhaul of the squad as well and some of the signings they made, but also, you know, Pogba's gone and um, most most interestingly, I suppose, Ronaldo was gone in the in the Chris in the January market. And they've rolled on since then and improved. So he's having a big impact on Hag. There's no doubt about it. Manchester United fans around the world are a lot happier what they're seeing from Manchester United now than they've seen for a long time. Is there a chance he could win the Premier League title in his first season in charge? Well, they're in with a shout now, aren't they? I mean, we're 22, 23 matches into the league and, and, and they're, they're in contention. The um, rivals have shown weak. Like we, they're on the best run of any team since the World Cup break. Yeah, they've, they've won 23 they've, points. Yeah. They're top of the form table. Arsenal and Man City, have, I know Arsenal got back to their winning ways. And I, I wouldn't be writing Arsenal off in the way people were midweek, but those two sides have shown weaknesses this season. That's right. And, um, you know, Manchester City will have that focus, will be back on about the Champions League with RB Leipzig coming up. Um, Arsenal don't have the same problem. They've, they won't play until the next round of the Europa League. But even the Europa League won't be as big a challenge, although I don't think they've got the depth of the squad, Arsenal, really. But they play their midweek team in the Europa League, which usually involves five or six of the main players with some of the backup players. And that should be good enough for to get them through in the Europa League games as it goes on. Ma- Manchester United are in a similar position, uh, whereas Manchester City's focus is going to be very much on the Champions League, I would think. And they don't have a huge squad. They've got a, maybe real quality up to about 18 players, I think, Manchester City. But yeah, it'll be a very interesting uh, finish to the season now because of Manchester United's improvement and the and the, and the the slight fall off from uh, both Manchester City and Arsenal. But you know, as it stands at the moment, Arsenal are still ahead, City not far behind, and Manchester United up there with them. They're in the race. Thank They're you, in Brian. In the race for sure, Stephen. <laughs>